This is Pete Moore on Halo Talks NYC. I have the pleasure of spending time with Stacy Bloom, who hails from Livingston, New Jersey, is a serial entrepreneur, and uh, we are doing a uh, gig together, as I'll call it, at the Soho House. Uh, it's called Sculpting Success in the Halo Sector, coming up in the next couple weeks. Stacy, welcome to Halo Talks. Thank you so much. So what we want to do is talk about your entrepreneurial uh, travels and uh, what you're doing today and excited about your patented, patented product and, um, you know, help our listeners here understand that if you have a good idea, you know, research it, run with it, trust your gut, um, understand that you are about to enter a roller coaster ride and it is going to encompass all parts of your life. And if you're ready to sign up, fasten your seatbelt and let's go. So, Stacy, give us your background from Livingston on. That's very true, the roller coaster ride of being an entrepreneur. Um, but when I started, you, you kind of don't realize that. You're just excited and passionate about a product that you want to bring to market. For me, that was personalized underwear. Uh, my family's in the uniform business, so you know those gas station attendant tags, those. Uh, sure, like, yeah, retro like the onesies, one, onesie uh, zip ups. Exactly. And um, I put them on women's underwear so they could surprise that special someone in a special spot. Um, this is the R rated version of uh, Halo Talks, by the <laughs> exactly. way. We'll move on to the G rated when you're done with this segment, but keep going. Parent, parent controls, keep going. Okay, now. <laughs> So I was very fortunate. I launched back in 2003 with um, some celebrity press. It was the height of the Benefer phenomenon, oh, Jennifer yes. Lopez, Lopez and Ben Affleck. Jen got some Ben underwear, and the Today Show and People magazine reported the sexy scoop mm. um, the same day that my website went live. Wow. Yes. How did, how, how did that scale? Hundreds of orders, literally, wow, nice. in the first couple of days. So the investment we made in the company, which was getting the product, the packaging, building a website, having a photo shoot, just $30,000, and we made that back within the first couple of weeks. Wow. Nice. So Yes. This not was to uh, back in 2003, though, before yeah. everyone and their mother had a website, and it was I don't no think there were media. influencers back then. They were no. just celebrities. Exactly. Uh, and uh, traditional media, like People Magazine and The Today Show. So it was awesome. I definitely felt the momentum of the business and the response to the product right away. So the business was kind of up and alive and going right when we started. Um, it snowballed too. You know, I did a lot of radio morning talk shows. Oh, I nice. was uh, the naughty you panty seem designer. Seem very poised right now. <laughs> um, I did some trade shows and sold into some boutiques. And there was a natural progression of people wanting other items personalized. So I expanded onto baby clothes. So that was um, a cute way for, you know, to introduce your little baby into the world, a little onesie, bibs, burp cloths. Was it, were, did, were these all monogrammed or after the fact? Or well, like this is a, a cooler version of a monogram. It's a, a oval name patch, that gas Got station it. tag. Okay. But so, did you mass produce like Pete and like... <laughs> I did. Jen and <laughs> Stacy. <and, laughs> we had um, a tower of thongs that literally held 800 pair. Um, so it was Bob, Bill, John, M John, Mike, Mark, Matt, Jeff, Jason. Got it. You know, like and those then, license plates that they uh, exactly the just airport. like the keychain yeah, key that you gotcha. spin those displays and go looking, okay. you know, for the names. But the buy-in was was pretty hefty. You know, my brother would joke around when we would go to tra trade shows that we weren't selling underwear; we were selling cars. Like, you know, <laughs> it was a uh, like You're saying an, it was big big numbers. Yeah, on invoices. Yeah. To, for in order to sell wholesale accounts. Um, but right. we had a great business with a bunch of hotels in Vegas. We sold uh, the Hard Rock Hotel and Harrah's and Paris and Flamingo. And yeah, it was a fun business trip to check out the displays there. Right. So, so what happened with that business and when did you start to pivot towards your current pat um, patented business <laughs> instead of other people's names? The baby business um, kind of took off uh, away from personalization. The personalization was doing its own thing online. And I like to be creative. I like to come up with new designs. So I had other ideas for baby fashion that were easier to sell to stores than the personalization. Mm -hmm. So um, I tacked little ties on onesies and t-shirts and I sold Barney's and Saks in Bloomingdale's. 
And then the big box retailers were interested. So when I had a kind of maneuver to figure out what it meant to sell uh, Bye Bye Baby or Babies R Us at a much lower price point, I had to kind of reconfigure my whole logistics and manufacturing and back end. Okay. When I did that, um, I ended up doing a licensing deal with a manufacturing partner. So that kind of freed me up to focus on my next big idea, because licensing is definitely um, more of a step back. I did play a role as a sales consultant and design consultant, but there was a bigger company that was handling the day-to-day of delivering the brand. Got it. Um, so I was excited to be able to pivot into my next idea, which is sweatband elastic. <laughs> so you've started up this new venture, and uh, intuitively you would think that this already exists, and, and it didn't. So what kind of work did you do to validate your idea that, okay, this doesn't <laughs> exist because somebody hasn't figured it out yet? Two, it is a good idea, even though nobody's figured it out yet. And three, you know, how am I going to convince people that what they're currently doing is not as good as what I can have them do? That's okay. a loaded question. Yeah, but I got Answer it. Answer any part of the <laughs> um, When I came up with the idea, it was inspired by my first business. So I was selling women's underwear. There was a hot boutique in L.A. that was just selling out of the thongs. And the owner said, I need men's underwear with women's name. And I don't care if you get Calvin Klein or Two Exist or, or any of these brands, just get some men's underwear and slap that patch on. Mm. And there was no way I was going to buy a, a different brand's underwear with my patch. So um, this was before American Apparel was selling blanks. And I couldn't figure out how to find blank underwear. I wasn't a cut and sew operation. So I was doing a lot of research on men's underwear, and every time I was inspecting what was out there in the marketplace, the waistband always had, you know, Hugo Boss or Calvin Klein or Mm -hmm. Ralph Lauren. And, of course, these are iconic, amazing designers and and brands, but I just thought that's a really sexy piece of real estate to be branded with these guys' names. So um, it just kind of hit me, like, what would be not only more comfortable, but cooler and actually functional is a sweatband waistband. Mm-hmm. With, with so, no name on it. No name, just right. that sweatband. If I could just throw in one Run DMC quote from back <laughs> in my day, it says, I think, don't want nobody's name on my behind was like a part of a rap song. Oh my but God, anyway, I totally have to start to including that in my marketing materials. I'll get I that for it. you. Yeah, we'll talk to Chuck D, <laughs> Public Enemy, and all the. Run DMC boys. Um, anyway, I felt like that was necessary. So keep going, keep going. So you came up with the idea to put it on. I came up with the idea. I got so excited. And I, I knew that this idea was so much bigger than me. So my first plan of attack was legally protecting it. And I spoke to a bunch of lawyer friends, patent attorneys, um, who kind of talked out the idea with me. And everybody, the, the first, you know, I researched patent attorneys for probably a year before I went with the guy that I went with. Um, He doesn't normally work with smaller entrepreneurs. He works with big companies like Nike and Microsoft. And Mm -hmm. I was really happy that he was willing to take this project on. And he's like, we're going to get this done. And cut to nine granted patents later. Um, How How long did that take to get nine patents? Well, uh, it was a process working with him to do the applications, and then it took 18 months after that for them to actually get granted. So you started out as a entrepreneur putting some names on some underwear and made that sell mm-hmm. um, and, and got some really great momentum. How did you, given you, you're very creative, and I think you're, you're an extrovert, would you consider yourself? I used to be. I'm more introverted these oh, days. Okay. But I'm happy to be chatting here anyway, now. <laughs> I feel like sometimes when I'm reading patent applications mm-hmm. and I'm like going through like the, the types of legalese that needs to be mm-hmm. presented as part of that, how did you personally like have the fortitude to say, okay, I'm going to read through all these. I'm going to make sure like all these patents are set up properly. And I really trusted my patent attorney. He, okay. He's, he's amazing. He, he speaks globally about patent issues. Um, and he, he shared, you know, details of things that were coming up. I thought one of the most interesting facts he shared with me that 
was we needed to get the illustrations, the drafts, men who did professional illustrations of the products, that that was a really key part to getting the patents published. So Again. it's not just the, the, the actual, like the legal mm -hmm. grammar of like, hey, this is what this is going to do, but, uh, but you need to, uh, actually, like Apple comes out with a lot of people find out what they patented and then say, okay, hey, they got this new hand, mm -hmm. you know, eye coordinator. So basically you're, you're relying mostly on the design elements as, as like that that was your part of saying to your patent attorney look you know i trust that you know you're the best Illegal in your field mm -hmm. so i guess part, one of the takeaways is surround yourself with the best people yes. in their areas of expertise yes and it was his confidence you know i did speak to a bunch of other patent attorneys that were like unsure if they were going to be able to get this done mm -hmm. and when i spoke to this guy and explained the idea and yeah, he was just like, we're going to get this done. It does not exist out there. I understand what you're communicating. I did mock up a bunch of samples and I sent, that to, mm -hmm. sent them to him. Um, but the thing is, if you go to Models or Dick's and buy a sweatband and cut it open and then attach it to your sports bra or attach it to your underwear or attach it to your sweatpants to hold up your apparel, mm -hmm. it's not going to work. It's not going to function as a, a piece of elastic would. The shrinkage, the elasticity. Right. But, you know, as far as just the actual look and feel, he understood what, what I was going for. So, so that's when I then took the next step to partner with the largest elastic companies in the world who re-engineered their machines in order to come up with a sweatband that is a functioning piece of elastic. Let, let me take a step back and let me ask a question. Did you ever come up with this idea and just say, you know what, I'm just going to go to market with it and I know how to sell things. Or like what, what gave you the one, I guess, the confidence to like the foresight to say, you know what, look, before I go to market with this, I'm going to actually like see if I can get a patent one, then actually go through the patent process and not, you know, rush to market. A lot of people like rush to market with things and they don't have any protection. They don't, you know, it's like, hey, is that patent? And no, no, we haven't gone through that process. Hey, is your, is your, is your name trademarked or copyrighted no we, you know we have it's like well maybe you should do all that up front so you actually have like a little bit of a mode around what you're doing so what what gave you i mean obviously your experience part of it but well, like I, what gave you like that like that you knew that that was the right sequence well <laughs> it was a, a learning curve <laughs> once the patents were published i did go to a global athletic company and just showed them the patents and this beautiful video and mocked up presentations of like what this could be. And they were very excited and complimentary and they sent me to their North American headquarters and I met with big teams there who were equally um, into it and excited by it, but they said that they did need a proof of concept and that this is an idea and granted it could be a trend, but we need to see proof of this concept in the market. Mm -hmm. So that's when I kind of took a step back and said, okay, I need to figure out how to take this patent and this big idea and actually make the working product. So that's when I partnered with the Elastic Companies, which I didn't even know existed. You know, I just had this idea and my patent and I'm like, I'm gonna go sell this to the big guys. Mm -hmm. Um, but just like YKK is a zipper company that kind of is right. pretty well known. So Pioneer and Stretchline are the largest elastic companies in the world that sell to the bigger companies. And I was fortunate that they were equally intrigued and excited to help bring a new product to market. Do you, do you think that their excitement was also related to, well, if this is the next big thing, I better be the one producing it because it might <laughs> cannibalize some of my other business. Exactly. Okay. How much did you tell them that versus did they like think that? <laughs> <laughs> I think that they were, you know, just kind of confused at first because, you know, they call themselves narrow fabric companies mm -hmm. and this is anything but narrow. You know, this is wider, this is thicker. They're saying, you know, you're doing exactly everything against the market trends. The market trends are going thinner and wicking away, and you're talking about absorbing. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, yes, but this is like the yin and the yang to, you know, wicking away. You need the opposite 
you know, absorption, because the truth is, you know, a polyester fabric that wicks away sweat, where is that sweat going? People still need to pick up a towel and wipe, wipe off some perspiration on their body. So this band that is attached to underwear or sports bras or yoga pants actually captures that perspiration. So it's really working with the wicking away fabric for the ultimate experience of dryness and comfort. Oh, wow. So you should create a tagline or something. <laughs> yes, feel dry and fly. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So you got through the patents. Uh, you've got, uh, looks like you've got a lot of samples. Uh, you can't see this from here, but maybe we'll caricature uh, <laughs> Stacy with some, uh, some elastics. Um, so, you know, Elastifuse, you know, is, is going to be coming to market. Uh, you've got some distribution to start. And, uh, you know, what's the path forward? And, and for the entrepreneurs here on the, uh, listening to this, you know, to understand that, you know, you, you've, you've seen trends, you've kind of built this business correctly, I would say, from, a, you know, somebody outside looking in saying like, okay, the first thing you should do is get a good patent attorney. Mm -hmm. Second is go talk to like the potential largest customer, get their feedback, then go back, set up a prototype. Now go get some distribution. So it seems like you've put all the pieces on the chessboard in the right sequential fashion, which I think, you know, when people are, are looking at starting a company, you know, sometimes it's like, it, it seems like an audacious task. It's like, well, there's actually like a hundred steps that you need to take. So it seems like you're pretty far down the road. So what's the next move? And, and I know you're, you're going to be hosting some, some events and get the, you know, influencers now that we have mm -hmm. real influencers. Mm -hmm. Thank you all you influencers. <laughs> we needed you for years. Um, you know, so what's the next couple of steps on, on the on the chessboard and then how do we you know make sure we can help you? Um, well, the Elastifuse technology, that's how the patents have been trademarked now. Instead of just like, oh, I'm Stacy and these are my patents, they are now Elastifuse technology, also known as EFT. Um, and then the proof of concept brand that we created is called Noble Titan. So it's Noble Titan patent powered by Elastifuse Tech kind of like the way Gore-Tex is an ingredient brand inside a lot of other garments. Mm -hmm. That's the vision for how Elastifuse technology gets embedded inside other brands. And Noble Titan is the first brand to have it embedded inside. My partner, uh, Pico, Marty Litt of Pico Manufacturing, has been amazing. He's the, the guy who made the underwear come to life. And now I'm working with another women's manufacturer, so I'm really excited that um, the sports bras and yoga pants are the next products in the pipeline. So the Noble Titan brand, nobletitan.com, people can buy the underwear there. It's also available on Amazon. And then hopefully not too soon after that, the women's products will become available. And then bigger people uh, will be licensing Elastifuse technology as well. Excellent. Well, in order to be a member of the Halo sector, you need to sweat. That's part <laughs> of the, the workout regimen. So hopefully we'll be wearing uh, Elastifuse uh, infused technology I love it. Uh, going forward. And uh, we appreciate it's you telling us you know, what, the, uh, what the steps were to, to get into this point. It's exciting. Thank you very much. I kind of, you know, I hope that it is as big as Gore-Tex or, or Velcro, just another ingredient brand that that everyone needs and just didn't know they needed it. Well, I guess <laughs> be, before we do part, I mean, you are, there's a frustration that you're solving. And like a lot of people start companies, you know, nothing against your other company was awesome. Like it was nice, you know, romantic and, you know, fun <laughs> thing and brought people some levels of joy. But like, there's a frustration that people go to the gym and they, they are, you know, they're dripping all over themselves and, you know, they have a towel, but they're kind of embarrassed. They don't know what to do about it or they're like shorts are like soaked after a class and things like that. So you're like, you're, you're focusing on a frustration that you're solving, not necessarily like a luxury item that would really, really be cool to have. And I, need, yeah. I, I want that versus I need that. Sometimes I, was, I say I need that. I was really happy to hear feedback from uh, some college basketball players uh, who reported that their underwear is usually soaked through when mm -hmm. they play, but this Elastifuse Tech Band captures all the sweat and that their drawers are now dry. And then that sounds I'm, like it could be another tagline. I know, My right? drawers are dry. <laughs> and then I have a friend who does Bikram, and she tested out 
the sports bra, and she said her mat is usually wet from yeah, all the sweat that's before. dripped down off of her body. But the Elastifuse Tech sports bra just, you know, solved that issue, and her body was dry. Wow. Along with her mat. I'd say you, these are, you sound like you, these are all battle-tested already. I'm not sure what other <laughs> prototype testing you need. Well, Stacey, we look forward to, uh, to being a part of the growth here and introducing you to the right people. Um, and uh, I think the entrepreneurs on this call have learned uh, on this call, on this podcast, have learned a lot about, um, you know, how to think through a business and, and play the long game. So that's, uh, that's important. So congrats on the success and uh, look forward to, uh, to maybe being, I don't know, the underwear model one day. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> All right. Take care. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much. Awesome. Bye-bye.